Text California Transition Alliance presents an Inclusion Films production. Text directed by Joey Travolta, sponsored by the California State Council on Developmental Disabilities. A fox sign on a building. A marquee on the fox building reads, let's work. The inside of a theater, red seats are empty. Stage crew sets up cameras and microphones. Let's work. Joey intro series, take one. Hi, I'm Joey Travolta, founder of Inclusion Films, a practical film workshop for adults with developmental and intellectual disabilities. We train people for the workplace. Two thirds of the crew on this documentary are students that we train. The unemployment rate for people with disabilities is unacceptable. I spent the last 15 years trying to open doors with big corporations and major studios I had an HR person once say to me, why should I hire somebody with a disability? And I said to them, why shouldn't you hire somebody with a disability? Especially if they can do the job. That's what this documentary is about. Highlighting stories of people with disabilities that are successful in the workplace. Let's take a look. Joey walks off stage. Eight directors' chairs form a semicircle on stage. People appear in the chairs. Hello everyone, my name is Aisha Collins and today I'm going to be conducting the interviews. And like many of you, I am also neurodiverse, but I do not let that stop me from becoming a filmmaker. I can do sound, camera, and I even do SFX makeup. So with that, let's get to work. What does success look like in your position and how do you measure it? All eight people raise their hand. Jenny, uh, in my position, the success is measured by how many students we serve. So it's easily measured by the numbers we serve each semester, uh, how many students we help, and what kind of services they utilize. Um, how I measure my success is looking at my schedule when I go into work, talking to all the customers, and then at the end of the day, I get a paycheck. So Kaylee, how do you achieve a goal? The easiest way to achieve a goal is to learn what you know and surround yourself with the right people and go for it. A sign reads, we walk to be inspired. Hi, everyone. Hi, this is my name. They say I don't have a mean blood inside of me at all. My motto is never give up and be big. My whole life, my dream was working for entertainment. So my mom always helps me to find something for me to do that. Every day she's got more and more dreams. So I have to be her dream maker and try to put some reality to what we can for her dreams. If she wants it, she's gonna go after it and pursue it. So I've always had that attitude of, let's take her and grow her to her fullest extent. I've never put a limit. So I work at Entertainment Industry Foundation and I'm the front desk receptionist. I deposit the checks, I deliver the mail, I do a lot of great things with them. When people show up at work with a disability, they bring a genuine joy of being there. It's not like a lot of people where they just show up at work, I'm here today getting my paycheck. Every day she shows up, she's present, she's excited to be there, and she brings that enthusiasm into the office. That's why she's done so well as a correspondent. She's interviewed at the Media Access Awards several years. She's interviewed at Real Abilities Film Festival, at different places with the media. When I had my first paycheck, ooh, I was in tears. I, it was amazing. Um, when, I, when I opened it to, and turned to mom, like, mom, look how much I got. Like, Unbelievable. I was really shocked and surprised. I'll tell you, the family gets excited for everything she does. With a full-time job, both her and her sister happen to start work on the same day, so that's been kind of fun. You know, they're competing for who's got the bigger paycheck. <laughs> 
So it's, it's fun, it's a fun dynamic and getting that first paycheck and realizing that, you know, I have worth and outside of the house, somebody else values my abilities. How I go to work is that um, my mom drives me everywhere, so mostly my mom um, drives me to work and from. But I also took access transportation as well. So my mom thinks that it's better for me to stay safe because I've been told in the bus and train some people can be sometimes different in different ways of attitudes, I would say, but yeah. It takes me an hour to get her to work, and then I have the return ride, and then I have to do the same to pick her up. So I get her to work on time. It's the only way to guarantee that she can maintain a job. No employer is going to want to keep her, keep anyone, if they are unreliable. But a lot of times I pick Kaylee up because she has so many activities representing so many organizations after work. Text Special Olympics logo, World Games, 2015 Los Angeles. Video footage of athletes competing in the Special Olympics. Crowds cheer on the competitors. Please now use the word kid. When referring to Special Olympics athletes, please call us athletes or Special Olympics athletes. Every experience that leads to your independence helps gain self-confidence. So I think with Kaylee, with working with World Games, I mean, she attended over 80 events besides showing up to work Monday through Friday every day. It was a very busy year and you know she spoke at many of them and I think each speaking engagement you could see her growing. It's like Kaylee used to be shy and now look at her <laughs> and now she's out there and she knows how to go up and introduce herself and how to promote companies and, and how to promote people with special needs and she's right out there and she just wants to keep expanding that way and she absolutely loves it and each time she does it she wants to do it more it's a passion with her it's great pursue your own dreams like if you have your own passions do it like i have a passion of entertainment and that's what i'm doing so i would say in the other ways of that is that never give up on yourself and don't have self-doubt in yourself is put the negativity away and think about something that you're passionate about and just go for the goal for it. Aisha sits in front of eight other people. So, Jenny, how can you increase your chances of getting a job? Um, having a great work ex experience and a positive personality really looks great on a resume. And an employer is likely to hire you if you have the skills they already require rather than pay to have you trained. But it really depends on the job which you are applying for. A baseball field, a sign for Mendocino College. Jenny walks down a sidewalk. Uh, my name is Jenny. I live in Ukiah, California. I'm currently a admin special uh, admin assistant for the EOPS office at Mendocino College. Uh, I process um, applications. I assist students with what they need, like if they want to know what their status is and what their application process is, or they need to turn in something for reimbursement. I first met Jenny when she was a student here about 12 years ago. She, I didn't really know her, but I saw her. She was a very popular student. She was the student body president, and she served on the board of trustees. When she started working in our, our office, I worked closely with her and have gotten to know her personality more and her skills. Jenny opens a filing cabinet. This year, we needed to hire someone for our office um, to help us with our program, and so she was one of uh, the candidates came in and interviewed, and I recognized her, she recognized me. I applied when I see the opening online. Um, I went through the interview process and eventually was offered this opportunity. A printer scans a sheet of paper. My favorite part of my job is that I'm able to pay it forward. I'm helping those students who's most vulnerable, have the most need to help them get to where they want to go, both professionally and educational goals. 
Our college has benefited from Jenny's employment because she brought with her experience as a student, also experience transferring from the community college to a university, and her personality. Um, she relates really well with the students. She's very cordial and pleasant and very helpful. Jenny has definitely been an asset to our office and to our campus. I used to socialize with the people I work with um, before this pandemic started. Uh, we would go to lunch and hang out and try on breaks and such. Pandemic kind of happened right after about a month after employment. That kind of limited on the social activity with my coworkers. Besides work, I take care of my 16 month old son, um, which is another full -time, time job on its own. Having a baby really changes our lives because it gives us more perspective on taking life a little more seriously. So we know we have to work harder and smarter and so we can raise him the right way. In the future, I would like us to, you know, have more stable jobs, have more um, money to give him more opportunities to travel and see the world. My advice to other colleges who would like to hire individuals with disabilities would be to treat them like any other candidate to look past their disabilities and really focus on the skills that they have, the personality they have, and what they have to offer your campus. I think my piece of advice for people how they're with disability looking for jobs just not to show, sell themselves short. They have experience like advocacy or you know, being a self-advocate for themselves and that, that I feel like is a great ability that they could put on their resume. And just make sure you walk into an interview with confidence to, to know that they are worthy of that job and they have the, the ability to do the job successfully. What is the funniest thing that happened in the workplace? Well, the funniest thing that happened to me at work, I have one student who is like um, nine years old that wanted me to be his girlfriend. Um, when a customer's buying spinach and the spinach jumps down the belt and they say, say hey, there's Christian, he's Popeye. Yes, are my forearms. <laughs> well, the funniest thing that happened to work was the first time I started my job in the industry where um, the dessert, we have an apple pie. With the apple pie, it comes with the pie, ice cream, and caramel um, frosting. So one day somebody ordered an apple pie. And with the apple pie, I didn't pay attention because our barbecue sauce and our caramel sauce were in the same container. So I grabbed the barbecue sauce and poured it on top of the apple pie and served it to the uh, server and he took it outside. So after five minutes, the bartender will come in and say, what happened to the apple pie? What do you mean? Oh, it had barbecue sauce. And I said, are you kidding me? He said, yeah. So the guy was from Australia and he said, in California, do you guys have barbecue sauce that tasted really spicy? I said, no, sir, it's supposed to be caramel. Oh, but I ate the whole pie. And I said, wow, that is, I thought California just like put barbecue sauce and everything. No, sir, it's supposed to be caramel. From that point on from work, they called me barbecue sauce boy. Hands throw mixed vegetables in a pan. Hands chop yellow pepper. My name is Ricardo Villegas. I am from San Diego, California, and I work at the Grand Manchester Hyatt. I've been working at the Manchester for uh, six years. My responsibilities, I could be working in three or four different sections. One day I could be working downstairs in the restaurant, and organizing and preparing for, uh, for lunch. Another day I could be working at the deli market um, doing sandwiches and salads for the guests. I've been Ricky's job coach on and off and basically what I'm there for is to try to help him if there's any issues, any trainings that needs to be done that he gets stuck, just to supervise that um, he's being treated right, that he does what he's supposed to do. All the jobs that he has, as much as I can remember, he's been prepping. My father used to own a taco shop when I was very, very young. When I got hired at SeaWorld, that's when I started learning how to cook. He uses a lighter to light a pan of food on fire. From the beginning, from the end, I will um, uh, read the tickets, and from there I will do the order by, by one by one. 
But if there's like an appetizer, I would do the appetizer first. Sometimes being alone and when you're cooking by yourself, sometimes you could be really, really busy and you're by yourself where you have like maybe 20 orders on the, on the board for you to cook for, for people. Normally we, we talk with Tariki before to find out exactly what's a good day to go see him because there's uh, really busy days. There's like days that he goes in early. So basically because of safety reason, I'm not allowed to be in the kitchen with him. And that will happen. But we meet before, after, or in between, and we talk about how he's doing, what is he doing something new, learning any new plates. Whenever there's new menus, we go over it. And so he can memorize it because uh, he needs to memorize all the new menus or everything. He needs to know it by heart. Do you live on your own? Uh, I do not live on my own. I live with uh, one of my brothers and with my wife. He's the one that does most of the, actually all of the cooking. I'll help every once in a while, but he, he's, he's good at cooking. Well, we want to grow a family. We want to grow a family. Yeah. We want to have, we want to grow a family and have kids. That's our, that's our future. We've gone through so much through our lives together. Of all the difficult jobs I had in my life. He hated working at one of his old hotels. When we first got married, he just didn't, he just would, wouldn't see eye to eye with a chef and he just was very uncomfortable there. From 2010 to 2012, I used to work at a hotel. That was one of my jobs as a cook. Um, that's how I got into the hotel industry from that, my, that job from the program. The, the chef from there was really, really kind and who understand me. And then from a year he left, and then from the um, new chef who came in, was just didn't like the program, didn't care about the program, didn't want to be part of the program. Just a lot of bullying and a lot of picking, and just um, I wasn't happy. So there was no communication. I was not allowed to go anywhere near the kitchen without her permission. So it, it became really, really stressful. I mean, it's like getting butterflies every time I needed to be with my client. And I always say, if I'm the job coach feels that way, I can't imagine what my client is feeling because it was really a horrible experience to be there. When I got the opportunity from the Hyatt, that's when I left. And they liked the program. Working at the, at the Hyatt is completely different. You know, everybody's so friendly. They're willing to talk to you. If there's any issues, you know, they come to you, they ask you, but most likely they are there to help. Um, Boats are docked in a body of water, hands chop an onion. For somebody to look out looking for a job right away, it's really hard. You won't find one right away, but when you do find one, and if you do like it, keep the job. But if you don't like it, don't waste your time um, staying there. Make sure that you're doing what you enjoy, even if it's from cleaning a table to doing a forklift. You know, uh, as long as you enjoy it, that's the best thing you can do. It doesn't matter what kind of job, if you're like a customer service or a chef, you know, you need to enjoy what you're doing to be happy. The sun sets over a city. So Cara, do you feel it's hard to be independent? The most difficult part of being independent is the learning process, getting from A to B, and when I make a mistake, to learn from the mistake. Polaroid photos of Carl as a child. I'm Carl Mead. I live in Elk Grove, and I'm a service specialist for Save Mart. I collect carts, I bag groceries, I put away the items that the customers don't want anymore. I clean the check stands. I do store sweeps. I do a lot of stuff. I know Carl uh, because I was his teacher, the adult transition program teacher. The transition goals for the students are typically being out in the community, also transportation goals, also job training goals. Well, everybody over there was absolutely amazing. 
day, you kind of knew I was having trouble filling out the application, so they actually filled them out for me while I told them what my experience was actually. The regional center is crucial, especially once they leave the, the public school system. At the age of 22, they age out, and so if a student is not hooked up with the regional center, they don't have a lot of support. Okay, they also get the SSI, which will help monetarily for a while, but obviously it won't pay for everything. So those two items were crucial in providing as much independence as possible. Carl was very easy to work with, and so when you're, when you're learning new things, he's open to learning new things, and that makes a difference because, you know, he wants to. He wants to succeed. He wants to do the best that he can. My favorite part of the job is getting to meet new people. The most difficult part is, I would say, being patient with some customers because some are not very nice, but that's okay. Because I'm a hard worker, I'm always here, and you don't have to worry about me calling in sick anytime soon. I love my job. It makes me feel more independent that way, so I have something to go to each and every day. The bottom line is I want them to be independent, but I also want them to be happy and then successful and enjoying what they want to do. Carl stands in front of Save Mart. So, Kiana, what's the challenge of having a job? The first few weeks, at a new job can be very challenging because you don't want to mess things up. There's so much to learn when, when you are hired. You have to know where everything goes and remember a lot of stuff. Kiana stocks shelves. She stands in front of Marshall's. My name is Kiana Gray. I work at Marshall's. Every day, my mom drops me off and picks me up. I work from one till three three days a week, four hour shifts. When I get to work, I have to clock it, and then my supervisor will tell me what I have to do. Sometimes my supervisor will have me unbox new clothes, and then I will hang them on the clothes rack. She loves fashion, she loves beauty, she's very neat and meticulous. She loves all things that are beautiful. As a child, she's my firstborn. She was always happy and rambunctious, and I didn't really realize that there was a couple of delays until she went to school and I was able to kind of see that she was a little bit behind and I had had no idea what autism was back then. She didn't talk or anything and so she was like four years old before she actually got the early start services and intervention and then after that she talks and I haven't been able to get her to stop. I always have to work extra fast at Christmas because it gets really crowded with customers and the store becomes a mess. It's my job to make, sh make sure every day is organized and clean for the customers. It can't be very tiring and hard to keep up, but I always manage. Kiana walks around organizing Marshalls. I really didn't think that she would probably get a job. Well, she started workability in junior high, and that's when I kind of really got to see that she really could handle a job and that it wasn't taxing for her. She looked forward to it. She liked it. She liked getting paid. She always spent my money, so I was happy for her to make her own. She's like excited every time she gets her check. When we cash her check, it's like the first time. She's like, oh, I'm rich. Everybody at the bank knows her. If I ever get stuck, I will ask my supervisor for help and she will put me in the right direction. It gets re really confusing in the beginning, but I got used to it once I got the hang of it. Kiana pushes a cart full of items around in Marshalls. It's funny, when my mom always knows when I have a bad day at work, it's like she can read my mind or something. My mom and I will talk about it at the end of the day and she will make me feel better. She's the best. A photograph of Kiana and her mom. She tells me everything. She wears her feelings on her sleeve. So anytime something happens, we would talk it out and talk about it. And it really has been good. And I think that my worries were kind of 
put at ease when I knew that I had resources that I could still contact. And then I also met with her boss and spoke with her. And we went to a couple of advisory board meetings together. So she has direct contact with me. And so I felt good about them kind of looking out for her too. And if there was a problem, I knew that they would kind of involve me and come to me and work it out. So open communication, I think helped knowing the people that she worked with, you know, it just made it a lot better for me. I have a lot of goals. The first goal is to drive myself to work every day. My mom says it's not a good idea to do that right now because I'm not ready for it. The second goal is to have a family of my own and being, be an amazing mom. Those are my two goals. Kiana stocks shelves. I think the best part is the feeling it gives her. I mean, she has purpose, something to do. I mean, she could go to a day program, but I think she's a little bit more progressive than she would be just sitting at a day program every day. I think she has a little more potential to do a little bit more. The future is just as bright for her as anybody else. I mean, I think she could go wherever she wants to go. And I'll just be right here to guide her and like, she'll steer me wherever she wants to go. What attributes does someone need to have in order to be successful in the workplace? Uh, I think patience and understanding, because a lot of our students come in when they haven't received their grants, and it can be frustrating for them because they need the assistance. So having a patience and having understanding that where they're coming from, and having a positive attitude and in order to be patient and help them out, and in order for them to be paid. So, Christian, do you feel it's okay to ask for help when you're first starting out? Yes, it is. Because if you don't ask for help, then you'll be stuck. It's always good to ask for help because you need to ask the right person. Christian helps a customer load their car with groceries. I'm Christian Jimenez. I work at State Brothers. I have a job. I've been there for four years now. When I first start my shift, I have to like look at my schedule, see what I'm doing, see if I'm pushing cards or what time my lunch will be, or see what I'm like doing. But everyone's like super, super nice over there. For us as parents, we are hugely proud of him because he does have three non-disabled siblings and he sees them doing everything and then he wants to do what everyone else is doing. So I know it's extremely fulfilling for him to get to do what everyone else is doing as well. I have independent living. Somebody comes over to my apartment, helps me like go grocery shopping, just hangs out with me, helps me cook, helps me clean my apartment. Luckily, we got connected with Goodwill. The Goodwill representative was amazing because Vaughn's was hiring, but Vaughn's closed down, so we had to switch to Stater Brothers. So she just helped with the whole process, filling out the application. They set up the interview. She knew he was going to get the job because they asked him, where do you see yourself in five years? And he said, well, I see myself working here in five years. And she said it was the perfect answer, exactly what they wanted to hear, you know, and, and they just really liked him and he got the job. Oh, my first paycheck, it was amazing. I love uh, getting money inside my account and it was, it was just awesome. It feels good to like wake up, put that uniform on, to like just motivate your day. So when they give him a uniform, he takes care of it meticulously. You know, when he gets ready and he, his hair is perfect, he always looks dressed perfect and ready to go and, and on time, you know, like he'll be ready an hour early for work, you know, sitting there waiting for his cab. I think it was just like my mentality. Like I wanted to get out of the house and get paid and start working and make money. I think the most difficult part of his job is customers because sometimes they can be very impatient with him. He's in kind of a difficult group of disabled because he doesn't appear disabled. That can be very difficult because then they get angry and impatient at him. One time at his first job at Vaughn's, I don't remember what he did. He's just in the parking lot. He didn't hit their car with the card or anything. He didn't do anything. But somehow the guy got really mad at him and, and yelled at him. But luckily, some woman, I wish I could find her, came out 
and started screaming at this man and said, how dare you, you know, and he does have a disability. So I think the customers get annoyed or frustrated. If I need help, I usually go to my um, boss or I will ask somebody who's, um, who's running the whole entire program and tell them, what do you want me to do next? next? And then I will do that next. A photograph of Christian as a baby. My husband and I are amazed at what Christian can do. We could have never imagined all of this when he was a little boy and he was so sick. It's a journey, you know, raising a disabled child and it's, it just, you know, it breaks your heart. A lot of the things that happen, but I had a lot of people along the way too that saw things in him that I didn't see. Christian's whole disability when he was younger, he was very off balance. You know, he has um, something called obstaclonus myoclonus syndrome. It's an ataxia, it's a muscle um, shakiness. And he was in Taekwondo for years. And one of his times he did a test for Taekwondo, a belt test. Master Lee told Christian for the belt test and all the parents were sitting off to the side and he told him, he said, okay, Christian, you need a balance on one foot for 30 seconds. And if you don't do it, you don't get your belt. I almost jumped out of my seat. I was like, what is this horrible man doing to my son? He knows he has a balance issue. He could never balance for 30 seconds on one foot. Christian just braced himself and he held one foot up and he did it for 30 seconds. I could not believe it. And then afterwards, Master Lee never looked at me. He looked at Christian and he pointed his finger at him and he said, never let someone tell you you can't do something. I was like, <laughs> okay, I think he's talking to me right now, you know? So it was a huge lesson for me. And that's, you know, many years ago. And it just taught me, let other people also guide your son because you're the mom, you know, and you do a lot of good things, but we're, we can be very overprotective too. Ricky, what are some qualities that are needed for a work environment? A good work environment is for people who I work with. If employees are happy, it's good. If the supervisors are in a good mood, it's good. It also goes as a bad environment. If everybody's in a bad mood, it's just bad. Everybody's not happy. So PJ, what's a fun day at your job? I always have fun with the kids, enjoy, and enjoy with staff. I learn lots of like new things and fun things. When should we stop learning new things? Never. PJ puts books in a wagon. Hi, my name is PJ and I work for Loading Unified School District as work experience assistant. And this is my six years and next year it will be seven years. And Lodi Unified is my home that I like to work at. PJ takes copies out of the copier. I do make copies, shredding, and help students um, to do one-on-one -on -one to show them what they can do. So I'll do a tutorial first and then they can do it on their own. And if they need help, and I'll definitely help them. And then one day or two days, they can do it by themselves. PJ went through our school system and was interested in working for the district and it was important for us to make that happen for her and for us because we it is a benefit to us to have her here. Uh, so it was important for us to have that opportunity, that pathway for her and other students to follow her so that they can be employed with Lodi Unified School District. Uh, she, she loved to work and she been working since <laughs> she was a little, little child, you know, and she's getting better and better day by day. Photographs of PJ. I got my job is I applied for an application and then I got the call for an interview, but I was a little panel, but then I, I made it through and I, yeah, and I'm working for full time. PJ is an asset to Lodi Unified in many ways. She's a good employee. First of all, it's dependability. She comes to work every day, on time, ready to work, ready to do her best. She has great customer service. She works well with her colleagues and the public, which is really important for any organization. We want good customer service. She is willing to learn new things, which is very important because we never know what task may come up. Um, she is always trying to better herself uh, and do a great job. My mentor is Liz Zastro. She's been helping me with everything for whole school year. And after that, I just started to learn how to do myself. 
I did CPR training. I did a technology training. But now I am learning lots of how to do a sign language. PJ gives two thumbs up. Cars drive down the street. I get to work is usually my brother or I'll do is a current transit. Uh, comes on time, come home. I go home early, which is that is better now. Uber sometime. Eh. <laughs> Sometime. I want to get a car, but I'm trying to take a DMV test, which I'm trying my best. But I'm going to try it again, and once I pass it, I'm going to start getting a car. PJ smiles. I think that there are several roadblocks for students who have been through a special education program in a school district, and one is perception. I think that uh, employers may not know um, what students have to offer and the skills that they do have and that they've learned in school. A lot of times an employer will require a high school diploma, which may not have been the path that the student was on. Perhaps they got a certificate of completion. And oftentimes employers don't know what that means and don't know that there are skills behind that certificate of completion. Um, I think that also we think of something new, we are uncomfortable with the unknown and we need to be able to be comfortable with trying something new and have employers realize that students with special needs can be valuable members of their um, community and can really serve them well. So I think it's a perception element that uh, we, need to, we need to combat. We need to really work on that. Uh, I feel happy. I get up at 4.50, get ready, be fresh, not to be stressed or rushing and I'm always happy. I make everyone happy. Part of the issue for students, any student, is knowing what's out there for them. And a district is a business. It's important that students, especially students with special needs, know what's out there and that they can have an opportunity to experience those skills and discover what they can do and what they want to do in life. PJ poses in front of a Buzz Lightyear mural. What gets you most excited about the company's feature? Me moving up and growing into the company. We've actually been talking about moving me over to like another department a lot, me and the managers. So I'm hoping that that does happen one day. Uh, the future is because I'm a temporary employee right now. So hopefully eventually one day a permanent position will open up and then I can apply and be a permanent employee at the college. What gets me most excited about the company's future is every time I see how people on the autism spectrum gain confidence from me, they prove to themselves that they, yes, they can do it. They can be able to like um, learn how to live independently and learn how to like do their own animation projects. It's like, wow. Not that long ago, a young girl named Danny visited an amusement park on an island in Japan with her pet cat, Iggy. Danny has always had an interest in animation ever since she was able to walk. Today we were expecting to meet Senator Lou Correa, but we had no idea we would also meet a remarkable girl who didn't let autism stop her from forming her own company at just 15 years old. Who encouraged me to do my work is um, Sandy and Patrick's ever since I first came up with the idea for Danimation Entertainment. We do animation production on short films, commercials, um, books, and any different types of um, production that would be shown one of the things that we saw with her was she always had language delays and she had challenges with speech. But yeah, you'd ask her about these drawings that she left all over the house and she'd go on for 20 or 30 minutes with zero impact whatsoever. You'd realize that she had no language deficits when it came to storytelling. I am so proud and very honored to be able to have Danny come and present today as a keynote speaker. Her interactions with her peers at school, her interactions with her teachers all kind of led us to the conclusion that she was much better in an environment where she was in control of that environment. There's another tool I'm going to show you. It's called the paint bucket tool, which means I can color anything I want. I'm just going to move these legs right here. Um, let me select those and delete. 
I originally thought about um, running an animation studio just to run an animation studio. At age 16, when I traveled around the country teaching animation to people on the autism spectrum, and I realized that people on the autism spectrum can do anything. Whenever I work with them, it's going, going from interaction back and forth is a great thing to see how the students could be able to create everything. And every time they create something new, I get so excited and I help them and help, I encourage them and help them develop their shorts that they love to do. And then I move it right here with the pair sprite, then I send it back. I wanted the world to see her the way I saw her. There was a lot of negative stuff out there about people with autism and showing only the bad things that they have, you know, their, their deficits instead of their strengths. And I, I didn't feel like I needed to show any more deficits. There was plenty of deficits with kids with autism out there. I wanted to show her strengths. I wanted people to see how she could create all these things. What I really love about my job is the ability to create something. The ability to create stories is a good, is always a good thing. That's what I really love is seeing the creativity come to life. Not just from my, not just from my creativity, but also from my students' creativity. Make, and then go to your marquee. Marquee, that's animate. Transform, that's onion skin. Transform, yes. She's going to get three degrees, that's what she's aiming for. And all three degrees are all for her company. And she's that focused. You know, the first one, of course, is animation, because she needed to be taken seriously with her animation world so that they know that she does know what she's talking about when she's talking animation. Second one was because she wants to learn how to run the company herself, her company, and understand, even if she's not gonna do all the work, she wants to understand what everybody, all the people that she works with and is hiring are doing. And the third one in psychology with uh, people with autism is because she's gonna be working with people with autism. Just because she's a person with autism doesn't mean she's qualified to work with people with autism unless she has a degree on it, and then she could do. She, she's not gonna be questioned on that. In order to be an executive leader, it's just using the window and the mirror analogy. Whenever I see success, I look out of the window, which means I thank everybody for all this hard work. I can brag about how my company does, but I never brag about myself. And whenever I see failure, I look in the mirror and it's my own responsibility. Whenever I mess things up, it's my responsibility. Always my responsibility whenever I make mistakes. And that requires maintaining equanimity. Okay, so Danny, how did you become your own boss? Well, becoming your own boss is not such an easy task. You really have to manage your own people and learning how to become independent 24-7. You really have to like them check your schedules, be organized. And also what's very important of being your own leader, your own boss, is education is the most important thing. You never stop learning. You just have to learn how to be independent and learn how to your own, being your own boss is is the most important key. You just really need to keep the, um, the flywheel going, just like what um, Jim Collins explained from Good to Great. The exterior of the Fox Theater. Palm trees line the city streets. Cars drive by. A view of the city. The sun is high in the sky. The interviewees walk toward the stage. The interviewees meet each other.
They talk to each other. Credits roll. Text in loving memory of Barbara A. Butts, 1948 to 2019, a fierce warrior and a gentle goddess who encourages all she touches to pursue their dreams and life to the fullest with disability, power, and pride. Let's work logo. Text, California State Council on Developmental Disabilities Logo. Transition Alliance Logo.